There are so many web apps whose sole purpose is to help you create waves so you can add to your web design. However, I still think that if you're gonna be using waves, it's always better to create your own waves. Because first of all, creating your own waves is not that hard. Also, once you learn how to write your own function that would allow you to create waves, you'd be able to tweak it and generate amazing patterns that you can then animate and do super cool things. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to write your very own random wave generator function in vanilla JavaScript. Before we begin experimenting with waves, we need to create a directory for our project and open it in our IDE. Then we will need to create an index.html file, an index.js file, and a styles.css file. Now let's go to our index.html and add the HTML boilerplate. Let's change the title to wave. And in our body section, Let's create a div and give it the ID wave container. And now let's go to our index.js file and start defining the function. Let's call it wave creator. Luckily, JavaScript offers us a very easy and convenient way to create waves. And that is the math.sign method. Before we tap into the powers of the sign method, let's create an SVG component to actually hold our wave path that we're going to create very soon. Document.create element and S. And S stands for namespace. And you usually want to use this method when you create an SVG. It takes two parameters. The first one is the namespace. The second one is the type of element you want to create. And we want to create an SVG. We also want to create a path element. And we're going to create it in the same way as we've done the SVG. So we'll use document.createElement and S. And the first param will be the namespace. The second one will be path. Next, let's set the size of our SVG element. So let's declare variables to hold the SVG width, which we want to be as big as our screen. So we'll use window.innerWidth to do that. And now let's declare a variable to hold our SVG height. And we can initialize it to 400 for now. And now let's set attribute width, SVG width, and same for the height. Now we want to declare a few variables such as frequency. In terms of a sinusoidal wave, the frequency is used to measure the amount of waves that occur in a period of time. But for us, it will help us control how many waves are drawn. So let's initialize it to, let's say, 0.1. Next, let's declare another variable, which is amplitude. Amplitude would be how high or low our wave can go. Let's initialize it to 30. Okay, now let's declare the phase variable, which would help us determine how far to the left or right our wave is shifted. And now for the fun part, let's declare our path data as a mutable variable. It's going to be a string template. So let's use backticks. And within it, we'll start our path data with the M command, which stands for move to. Now we need to give it an X coordinate to move to. And we want that X coordinate to be zero because we want to start drawing from the very beginning. And for the Y coordinate, let's equate to SVG height divided two. Okay, and now for the super fun part, which is going to be a loop. We are going to create a loop that loops through every x-coordinate. So to do that, we will in initialize 
x to 0. And we will loop for as long as the value of x is less than svg width. And for as long as it's less than svg width, we'll keep increasing the value of x by 1. For every x coordinate, we want to also create a y coordinate. So let's declare const y and it will be amplitude times math dot sign frequency times x plus phase. And all of this, we want to also add it to SVG height over 2. And now we want to append each of these x and y coordinates that we create in our loop to our path data variable. So path data plus equal. And we'll start another string template. In it, we'll use the L command. L command stands for line 2 and we want to line to our x coordinate and then y coordinate. So those were the steps needed to create a wave. To display our wave, let's add the path data to our path. So path dot set attribute and d for data and that will be path Data. And then we need to append the path to our SVG element. So SVG append child will append path. Now let's append our SVG element to our div that we've created earlier. So first let's get our div const wave container equals document dot get element by ID and the ID is wave container and then wave container dot append child and we want to append the SVG and now let's call our function so wave creator if we want our function to work we need to link our index.js file to our doc.html file. And now it should work. <laughs> Let's see. Let's preview in default browser and see what happens. <gasps> it does work. It seems that our waves have a fill by default. How about we change that? So path dot set attribute and we want our fill to be transparent. Okay, let's refresh and see what happens. Now we can't see anything. <laughs> so let's add a stroke. So path dot set attribute stroke and let's set our stroke to black. Okay, that's cool. All right, let's change our frequency value. Let's see what happens if we give it a smaller value. So how about 0.01 it gives us this wave shape how about if we change our amplitude value and increase it for example that looks really nice what if we change our phase so now would be a good time to pause the video and play around with the variables and see what you can make how about we make our wave a closed shape so that if we add a color, let's say blue, then we would have a wave that's colored blue. Okay, so in order to close our shape so we can have a nice wave that we can assign a color to, we need to append to our path data string. So path data plus equal and we're going to create another string template. So you, let's use backticks. And we'll start our string template with the L command again, which stands for line two. And we want to go to 
the x coordinate which is equal to SVG width. And we want our y coordinate to be equal to SVG height. And then we're going to <laughs> command our path to go to zero, so L zero, and our Y coordinate would be equal to SVG height. And finally, we want to close our string. So we'll use the Z command, which stands for close path. Okay, let's see if it worked. Let's refresh our browser. Yay, it worked. We have a wave. Isn't that cool? Okay, let's see if we can generate random waves. In order to do that, we can use math.random and randomize our variables. For frequency, let's see what happens if we randomize it and set the max to 0.2. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. I guess 0.2 is way too high. So let's, let's max it at 0.1. I think that's better. Maybe also a bit too high. Let's make it 0.05 or how about let's <laughs> make it 0.01. All right, let's actually, before we do anything else, let's remove the stroke because it's kind of annoying me aesthetically. And also let's add an opacity attribute and lower the opacity a bit because this blue color is way too bright. That looks nicer. All right, and how about we also randomize the amplitude. So math.random times 80. Okay. I think it looks cool. And the phase, same thing. So math.random. Let's make the max 10. Okay. Cool. Nice. All right. Maybe, you know, in order to avoid getting shapes that look like a straight line, maybe we could add. 0.01 to the frequency. That way we make sure we always have waves. Or we could also set an interval. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So guys, we did it. We created a function that allows us to create waves. Now I challenge you to use it and see what you can make. And if you do, please let me know about it. I really, really enjoyed making this video and I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like button and the subscribe button. That would mean a lot to me. Um, I will also leave a link to the Git repo in case you wanna download the code or look at it for reference. So as you can see, I played a bit with the function and added some CSS. I'll also add that to the Git repo. All right, see you later. Goodbye.